right here, right here. It's there. It is there. Go to go to go to CSI Dolphins. Live from the tank on the campus of the College of Staten Island, you're watching exclusive coverage of the 18th annual championship game of the Tournament of Heroes right here on CSI Sportsnet. This afternoon, the College of Staten Island will look to defend their Tournament of Championship uh, record as they will take on Wheaton Lions here this afternoon. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Babuski alongside my broadcast partner, Dave Pizzuto. And Dave, it was a... Uh, Tur opening tournament game for the history books yesterday for the CSI Dolphins as they were able to win in double overtime, 103 to 98. Yeah, you know what? It was a fun game, Mike. It was a game that went back and forth. Uh, we had a good time with it. Um, it got a little nerve wracking, you know, towards the end and uh, through overtime. But the Dolphins, you know, when we spoke to TJ Tibbs after the game, when we spoke to Adiola Latunji after the game, they both made it known, you know, they stayed the course. You know, they didn't they didn't get down on themselves. They did what they had to do. They stayed c composed. And it was nice to see the Dolphins really complete a game that went right down to the wire. Uh, it wasn't always pretty. It was sloppy in certain stretches. Uh, the Dolphins had a big lead that they let evaporate. But they played to the end, and they got the W, and that's what counts. And, you know, Dave, Adiola Latunji, another huge game. 15 of 23 shooting, 50 uh, minutes of play. He finishes the game with 38 points, 10 rebounds, 6 blocks, and 3 steals. And, you know, the Dolphins needed every bit of that production as they were able to squeak out a victory in double overtime. Yeah, he's been terrific. You know, Adiola's been doing it all year long. Uh, he's averaging over t well over 20 points a game. And when he needed it, you see the stat line on your screen. He was terrific. The 38 points and the blocks, those are both career highs for him. The 38 points were the most in tournament of history's. Uh, tournament of Heroes history, um, you know, and, um, you know, when the Dolphins need a big basket, when they need a big stop, when they need a big three, when they need a big putback, you know, a, a, an offensive rebound, you know, Adiola's name just keeps coming up and he just keeps delivering. So, you know, um, he did what he had to do in a game where the Dolphins needed him most. He rose up to the occasion. Curry would not go away. They needed every bit of, of help from every player, and the Dolphins got it. They completed the game. It was a nice win for them. Yeah, and, you know, they got uh, double-digit scoring from five players in that game. Joe Zeris finishing with 17 points on 7 of 10 shooting to go along with 12 rebounds, three blocks, and three steals. Andrew Cartalis, another strong game, 13 points on 5 of 8 shooting. Mick finishing with 13, and Regal DeSteam finishing with 12 points, 11 of them, Dave, coming after the uh, first half. And, you know, it was a game, Dave, the Dolphins shot over 54% from the field. Yeah, and you know what? Like, when you shoot that well, uh, and especially when you don't go that deep off your bench and you're shooting that well, uh, you're shooting well from beyond the arc, you know, those things, uh, it's hard to lose when you're playing that well, you know. And the Dolphins had their share of mistakes. They did commit a lot of turnovers. Uh, you know, in the game at some points they gave up, you know, offensive rebounds in some stretches. But when you're shooting up over the 50% mark, every team is going to be hard to beat at this level of basketball. So uh, the Dolphins just have to make sure that they keep their shot selection uh, on the high end. High percentage uh, shots lead, uh, lead, you know, high percentage results. So that's what the Dolphins really have to factor in on. Get the, get the short-range game going, get the easy putbacks in, and when you have your open looks from three-point range, you got to hit at least half, if not 60% of those open looks. Dave, now let's uh, turn our attention here for just a minute to the uh, Wheaton Lions. Wheaton coming in, having uh, defeated Bridgewater 88-75. to It was a game that they uh, had a three-point lead in with just a couple of minutes to go in the first half. They finished that first half on a 7-2 to run. Opened up their lead to double digits in the second half, and really uh, the Bridgewater was never able to get it closer than eight or nine points in that second half. No, and they did a really good job of really every time Bridgewater had a surge, and we saw that in the first game today. Bridgewater had those moments, those surges ahead. Um, you know, Wheaton did a really good job of, of you know, clamping down, playing strong defensively, uh, making sure they cleaned up the glass when they had to. And when they needed the big shots, they got them. You know, uh, Aaron Williams only played 27 minutes, Mike, last night. But every time there was a big stretch in the game, he delivered. He had 29 points 
in just 27 minutes. He was 14 of 18 uh, from the floor. Robbie Lowy was the other interior threat, Mike. He battled some foul trouble during the game. He finished with 15 points and 13 rebounds. He was sensational, especially when he needed to be. And, Mike, you made the, um, the observation yesterday about Alex Dubro and how he was 0 for 8 at the halftime mark, seemingly, you know, a non-factor uh, yesterday. And he came out, he scored 13 points in that second half. And he was doing it uh, even when he was struggling from the field. He was finding open teammates. He finished with 10 assists. So, you know, they got production everywhere in their lineup. And really, when they needed it most, they got the production. And that's what counts. Yeah, and, you know, Dave, this is a Wheaton team that took 75 shots in the game yesterday. And they're coming in averaging a very impressive 87 points a game. So, you know, they're going to want to uh, get into a little bit of a running contest. They're going to want to put a lot of shots up. And it's going to be interesting to see if the Dolphins are able to stop him. And, you know, you mentioned Darren Williams before, uh, Dave. He looks like a real talented young freshman. And, you know, the Dolphins are going to have their hands full trying to stop him here this afternoon. Yeah, I was joking with TJ before the game. I was asking him what his impressions were of this uh, Wheaton team. And he's like, I don't know what how we're going to stop 34. We're just going to, you know, we're just going to try and, you know, put some body on him down low and, and just, you know, cross our fingers, hope for the best, you know. And, um, you know, again, he's, it's, um, he's one of those kids that he's really hard to game plan against. You know, how do you game plan against the guy who's that big, who's that strong? And, you know, for his size, um, you know, he gets around really well. He's very nimble around the basket. Uh, he can get over the rim. He can shoot with the left hand. He can shoot with the right when he's in close. And those are dangerous players. You know, when you got guys who can play, uh, you know, on that – in. Can, that can be that interior of a force and who could take just a couple of strides and get from the free throw line to the basket. Uh, you know, the, the Dolphins have one of those kids. His name is Adiola Latunji. You can see what he does to opposing defenses. Um, you know, a bigger and a stronger version of that exists with uh, with Aaron Williams on the other side. Doesn't play full games. You know, he's, he's a bit on the huskier side, if you will, Mike. Uh, you know, but he only, again, 27 minutes last night. And um, they were keying on him. They couldn't stop him. He had 29 points. Yeah, and Robbie Lowy, the uh, the senior uh, forward player uh, for the Lions, also a strong game, Dave. He finishes 6 of 11 from the field, 15 points, 13 rebounds, and a couple of blocks. So, you know, another talented, strong inside player for the Lions. Yeah, I like how Lowy played yesterday. He was probably my favorite player on Wheaton's team. And the reason why is because he was in and around everything, Mike. And even with being in foul trouble, you love a guy who's always in the right place at the right time. When there's a uh, when there's a long rebound, um, you know, being um, you know being involved in the play, being somewhere where he needs to be, smart player. And um, and I really like the way he played, and I'm expecting big things from him as well. Yeah, Dave. So as we uh, wind down to the buzzer and get ready for the uh, starting lineups here today. Uh, Dave, uh, you know, it should be a really challenging afternoon for the Dolphins. And, you know, the Dolphins went a long time without winning a Tournament of Heroes championship, and now they're looking uh, to defend them in back-to-back -back years. Yeah, and they've won three out of the last four years as well. So they kind of have a little bit of pedigree working in their favor. And, you know, a lot. You know, this this game, this tournament means a lot to T.J. Tibbs and his and his uh, program, not because it's another win in the win column, but because of the significance about remembering your former alumni who were killed in 9-11. And th there's no shame if you ever lose a tournament like this, especially when you're playing some good competition. But they want to win because they want to send their alumni out on a good note. You can see the crowd is a good one. A lot of alumni in the house. And, you know, uh, the Dolphins really want to show uh, well in this tournament. And they have been the last few years. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, Dave, as uh, we hear the uh, Wheaton Lions getting introduced out on the floor. And while those players are out on the floor, why don't we get you this afternoon's starting lineups here in this 18th annual championship game. And here to bring them to you, my broadcast partner, Dave Pizzuto. Dave? All right, let's take a look at the Wheaton College Lions head coach, Brian Walmsley, in his 23rd year. Here are the starters. You can see three freshmen in that starting lineup, number four, Evan Cook, number 13, Alex Dubrow, number uh, 15, Alex Carlisle, number 24, Robbie Lowy is one of the two seniors, and number 34. We mentioned him plenty in the pregame, number 34, Aaron Williams. And the starting lineup for the CSI Dolphins, it is a familiar crew, head coach T.J. Tibbs 
in his third season in numerical order. They go at number two, Adiola Latunji, number uh, three, Rigo Destim, number five, Austin Mick, number 12, Andrew Cartalis, and number 24, Joe Zeris, who had uh, a very good game last night. We didn't mention Joe's name in the pregame, Mike, but uh, you did. But uh, we, we didn't really harp on the performance that he had. He fouled out, but 17 points, 12 rebounds. That, uh, if you're getting that production from Zeris night in and night out, that is going to be pretty strong. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, Dave. He also was 7 of 10 from the floor and played 47 minutes before he fouled out of that game. And, you know, unlike the other teams in the tournament, uh, uh, Dave, uh, head coach T.J. Tibbs has not played that many players and really played a lot of plays extended time. Only six Dolphin players played more than 10 minutes in the game yesterday. Exactly, and only eight players played in total. So... Um, you know, a couple of players playing sub 10, minute, uh, 10 minutes, and then it was Chris Velasquez who had a monster role uh, in the game as well. I think he's 32 minutes, I think, Mike, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in that game last night. So uh, Dolphins don't go very deep, so you always got to look at the foul situation and make sure that they're staying out of foul trouble. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes for them. But they're on their home floor, Mike, which has been very kind to the Dolphins. The Dolphins do play very well here on Staten Island. They played very well here last year, and they're off to a 4-1 and one record on their home court as opposed to 0-5 oh on the road. Yeah, and you know, one of the questions the Dolphins had was who was going to handle the ball in the absence of Christian Taylor, and I really think Austin Mick has exceeded all expectations in his ability to handle the basketball and distribute it uh, here in this 2019-20 season as the Dolphins control the opening tip. And it is Mick to control for the Dolphins. It's a role that we didn't see him much in last year, obviously, with Christian Taylor at the helm. But like you said, Mike, he's done a fine job. Destin with the basketball, working the ball up over in the corner, and the three-pointer by Mick is good. So for the second night in a row, he hits his first shot of the game. Now you love that start for the Dolphins. Obviously, they do rely on the three quite a bit. And uh, Mick makes it hurt in the first shot of the game. Dubrow in the Lions' first possession over to Carlisle. He kicks the ball in the corner to Cook. Now it's Williams out by the three-point line. That long three-pointer is no good. And Mick grabs the rebound for the Dolphins. Zeris pulling up at the three-point line. And that three-pointer is good. So the Dolphins start off red hot. Yeah, so you know what, Mike? The Dolphins just paid absolutely no mind to Aaron Williams who was in three-point land at the baseline. They pretty much ignored him there, let him shoot. He put up an air ball, and then one-on-one, -on -one, man man-to-man defense, Williams couldn't catch, catch up to Zeris, and Zeris had a wide-open free. Yeah, so that time, Lowy worked the ball in the corner. As you see, uh, Mick hit that opening three-pointer as he worked the ball inside to Cook, and Cook was able to draw the foul that time on Austin Mick. As you see, the three-pointer by Zeris as well as that ball is going to be out of bounds. Last touch by Evan Cook, so it will be Dolphin basketball. So nice start here this afternoon, Dave, for the Dolphins. And the Dolphins, remember, got off to an 8 nothing lead yesterday, Mike, so they got off to a pretty hot start against Curry College, then relented a little bit, see if the Dolphins can continue with their foot on the gas. Cartalis handing the ball off to Destim as the Dolphins weave out well beyond the three-point line with 15 to shoot. Latunji. Latunji pulls up for the jumper. That's up no good. And it's Dubrow getting his first rebound of the afternoon. Cook working the ball over in the corner. Now they feed it into the side to Williams. It's going to be knocked out of bounds, but it'll remain Lion basketball. Yeah, good heads up play. You don't want to give Aaron Williams space in the paint, ball flat on his hands. You want to contest everything that's coming onto the inside. That ball lobbed back out now as it'll be Cook with the basketball. As the Lions look to set up their offense with Debro. They work the ball in the corner now to Cook inside of 10 seconds to shoot. Dubro putting up the long three-pointer, and that's good. Yeah, and that was well contested, too. That's a pretty shot by Alex Dubro. He was held scoreless in the first half last night. Quickly on the board here in game number two. Yeah, so he's off to a good start and that makes it a 6-3 game. Mick with the basketball. That looks like the Dolphins are, consent, are content to run outside plays and run down the shot clock a little bit here in the early going. As that's Zeris on the outside. 
Ball fed to Cartalis. His floater in the lane is no good, and Williams is there for the rebound. Yeah, Cartalis bothered just enough with that shot to put it up and was expecting contact. Contact never got Nice it. feed inside to Williams, who lays it up and in, and boy, he was able to take that one right to the basket and make it a 6-5 game. Yeah, he doesn't need a lot of real estate at all. Give him, you know, 12, 12 inches, a couple of feet, and he'll do the rest. Mick with the basketball, bounce pass over to Zeris. Zeris working his way inside it as his reverse layup is up and in. He's two for two yeah, this that's afternoon. What, that's what I like about what the Dolphins are doing is that they're attacking Williams defensively. He's an extraordinary offensive player, but the Dolphins think he can be had defensively, and they're attacking him on the inside. Ball worked out to Carlisle. He now feeds it over to Cook. Cook looking to drive his way inside. That shot is blocked. Williams puts up the rebound. The shot's blocked, but he draws the foul. Yeah, and that's, you know, Zeris is such an um, involved defensive player that he will take his fouls. I mean, he leads the Dolphins with, I believe, 25 um, blocks this year. But if he gets into foul trouble, the Dolphins could be in overall trouble as thin as they are on the bench. Yeah, and he's played so well, Dave. He was uh, 7 of 10 yesterday from the field and has already hit his first two as Williams hits that free throw. Yeah, he played 47 of the Dolphins' 50 minutes yesterday. He did foul out, and that's the only reason why he didn't get the full 50 or close to it. Adiola Latunji went the distance yesterday, played all 50 minutes. One more free throw upcoming here for Williams. And that's up and in. Williams also a 71% free throw shooter. He hits them both. And that makes it a one-point lead once again. Mick with the basketball. Guarded there by Dubrow. Now Cook switches over. As the Dolphins work the ball over to Destine. Now in the corner to Latunji. His jumper is up no good. But the Dolphins able to grab the offensive rebound. Mick hoisting up the three-pointer. That goes in and out. Fight for the rebound. And we're going to have a jump ball possession, and possession arrow will go to the Lions. Yeah, Latunji started off red hot yesterday. He's missed on his first two attempts today, and then Mick with the hard luck in and out on his three-point attempt. So now Cook will bring the ball up the midcourt uh, mid line just over three and a half minutes into this first half as Williams once again hoisting up that three-pointer. That's no good. Long rebound tipped, and Zeros controls it for the Dolphins. Feeds it over to Latunji. They work the ball in the corner to Cartalis. His three-pointer is up no good. Carlisle there to grab the rebound, and the line's looking to push the tempo. Dubrow with the basketball. Bounce pass inside to Williams. Williams backing his way in that shot block beautifully by Zeris. And here come the Dolphins. Destim out beyond the three-point line. Now Zeris working the ball up over to Mick. Now Cartalis in the corner trying to drive that ball inside, but his pass is stolen away by Dubrow. And here come the Lions, three on one, inside to Williams. He lays it up and in, and he's got six of the nine Lion points as they take their first lead of the afternoon. Yeah, and you could see Williams that time doing it with the left hand on the inside. And when you give Wheaton three on one breaks, they're going to hit most oftentimes. Turn around jumper that time by Destim is no good, but Latunji there to sky above the rim and tip it in. Yeah, they wanted a goaltend on, on that or an interference while the ball was on the rim, but that was a nice tip in there by Latunji. Timed it just right. Dubrow with the basketball now looking to work against Cartalis. Nice bit dribbling there, maintaining control by Dubrow. He feeds it inside to Lyons, who lays it up and in. Yeah, a lot of helter-skelter play, but Dubrow never lost sight of Lowy on the play, and he gets on the scoreboard. Yeah, his first basket of the afternoon is they feed it in tied to Zeris, and he's going to be able to draw the foul. So we'll have our first media timeout as you see that replay of that beautiful Zeris block. And we'll have a timeout on the floor. Let's step aside, take a break. The Dolphins trail by a score of 11 to 10. You're watching the 18th annual Tournament of Heroes Championship game right here on CSI Sportsnet, CSIDolphins.com. Black on Staten Island, a top five wing joint in America by Food and Wine Magazine. Serving daily lunch and dinner at the bar or on the floor. 
Perfect for family and group parties with top shelf drink and delicious food. From great times with good friends. Live sports and watch parties. To Staten Island's hottest nightlife. The Kettle Black features live music and DJs weekly. The Kettle Black features daily and nightly food and drink specials. The best Staten Island has to offer is at the Kettle Black. We'll see you there at the Kettle Black, located on 415 Forest Avenue, Staten Island. We're back with 14.39 remaining in the first half. The Dolphins hit their first two three-point attempts of the afternoon to take a 6-0 lead. Since then, it's been an 11-4 run by the Lions to take a one-point lead. Dave, what are your impressions of the game so far? Yeah, you know, the Dolphins have had their open looks, Mike, from three-point range. We saw Latunji miss a baseline one. We saw Mick miss. We saw Cartalis miss. And then uh, on the other side of the floor, a couple of easy transition baskets for Wheaton have been the difference and them taking over the lead. We heard a very animated TJ Tibbs in the, um, in the huddle during the timeout, and he wants his team to tighten up defensively, Mike. We can hear him all the way from here. Uh, really needs his, his group focused on not letting up easy transition scores. So Zeris misses his first free throw. His second is up and in. Zeris coming in shooting 56% from the free throw line is that's Lowy. Lowy trying to back in that time against uh, Desteem and he's able to lay it up and in. Yeah, he's been sharp so far. S second basket of the game for Lowy. He has four and the Lions gain a two point lead. Desteem, long three pointer is up, no good. Lowy there to grab the rebound and hands the ball off to Debro. Dubro looking to work against Velasquez, who checked into the game. The pass goes inside, but it'll be out of bounds. And it'll be a turnover here for Wheaton, their first turnover of the afternoon. Yeah, that's the one turnover for each team so far. So both teams have been good so far about protecting the ball. Velasquez with the basketball now gets the ball up over to Zeris. Bounce pass now goes inside to Latunji, and he's kind of bodied along the baseline, and he's going to pick up the foul, and it'll be the second team foul of the afternoon as that foul will be on Lowy, and that will be his first. Yeah, Lowy had to kind of swing along with Latunji on that turnaround into the lane. Dolphins inbound the ball to Zeris. Zeris. Working the ball up over to Velasquez. His long three is no good, and Carlisle is there to grab the rebound. Carlisle nearly losing possession, and he's going to get called for the travel. Dolphins now two of seven from three-point range, Mike. They're just two of five from inside the arc. So you could see how the Dolphins are reliant on the three-pointer here in the early stages. Seven of their first 12 shots from outside the arc. So Destin walking the ball up now. The for the Dolphins. Wheaton in the middle of a 13 to five run. Desteem going all the way to the basket and laying it up and in. Good aggressive move by Desteem as he gets his first basket of the afternoon. 13-13 the score. Lowy able to back Zeris in and lay it up and in. And that's where the Dolphins are going to have their challenges on the inside today, Dave, with both Lowy and Williams. Yeah, because you know with Williams on the bench right now, you don't want Zeris picking up his second or his third foul. You need him defensively in the game against Williams. And so, you know, Wheaton's smart. They'll give the ball down low to Lowy and have him work his way against Zeris for some, uh, for some baskets that way. So it's going to be Carlisle picking up the foul. That's going to be his first. Third team foul for the Lions as Velasquez will inbound the ball and Desteem will set up the offense for the Dolphins with 14 to shoot. Jumper that time by Latunji is good and the Dolphins tie this one up at 15. After missing. James, sorry, Dave, Dave. James Delahanty also checking in for the Dolphins. Right, in favor of Zeris. Ball kicked out now, the open three-pointer by Lowy is good. He's starting to heat up as well. 
15 of the 18 points called uh, by Lowy and uh, Williams in this first half. Yeah, and Lowy 4-4 now from the floor. Mick with the basketball. Mick working against Ripley. That long three-pointer that time by Latunji is no good. And the Lions with the basketball at a three-point lead. Dubrow stutter step move and the reverse layup is, is good. Beautiful layup that time by the senior guard. Yeah, and the Dolphins are starting to get twisted defensively, Mike, because right now Wheaton is hurting them from the outside in. So when the Dolphins want to respect the outside shot, Wheaton is forcing it inside. When they're, you know, collapsing in interiorly, they're putting up, um, putting up the three-point shot and hitting them. As Velasquez will be called with the travel, second Dolphin turnover of the afternoon, as you see Robbie Lowy step outside and bury that three-point shot as we're going to have a timeout on the floor. 11.39 remaining here in the first half. Lions 20, Dolphins 15. We'll step aside, take a break, and we'll be right back. Hobra, a taco joint, Staten Island, where we're proud to have shared our family-first spirit with people from throughout New York City and the world. With indoor dining available both at the bar and on the floor or step outside for additional seating and an outdoor bar. Serving beer that's crisp, ice cold, and worthy of a day at the beach. Cocktails that explode with flavor. And great food made with the freshest and healthiest ingredients available. Events feature food and drink specials. Live music. And the best of Staten Island nightlife. Your CSI student ID saves you 10% on your dining order at Hobra. Visit us at 412 Forest Avenue, Staten Island. We're back with 11.39 remaining here in this first half. The Dolphins scored on their first two possessions to take a 6-0 lead, but since then it's been a 20-9 run by Wheaton College. Dave, what's been the turnaround here in the first half? I, I think the Dolphins defensively haven't had, a, uh, you know, haven't had a chance to kind of figure out how to attack Wheaton offensively. And, you know, the Dolphins have been relying on the three-pointer, Mike, and the shots, the shots simply aren't falling right now. Dubrow with the basketball. Now he gets it over to Lowry, and his long three-pointer is good. Lowry now with 12 points in the game, Dave. He shoots 59% from the field, 50% from the three-point line here on the year. Well, he's 100% tonight. He's 5 of 5 overall, 2 for 2 from beyond the arc. 23-15, the biggest lead of the game for Wheaton as the Dolphins need some good offensive sets. And that was a good-looking play by the Dolphins that time, but Delahanty's pass just off the fingertips of Austin Mick. Dolphins turned the ball over for the third time, Dave. Yeah, that one's on Austin. That was a nice feed there from Delahanty's. Not much better you could do with that pass, and Mick would be open underneath for an easy layup. And Dolphins, they're guilty of a turnover and now commit a foul the other way. Yeah, that time Velasquez uh, got his hands up and Dubrow was able to draw the foul as Chris will pick up his first foul. Both teams with three team fouls here just about at the midway point of this first half. Ricardo Ripley to inbound. And, you know, Dave, a uh, big difference between the two teams. Wheaton doesn't hesitate to play the bench and Head coach C.J. Tibbs limiting the uh, amount of players playing for the Dolphins. Feed inside to Lowry, and he lays it up and in, and he's really hurt the Dolphins, Dave, as he continues his perfect shooting. Yeah, and it's not even L Lowy on that play. That was all Alex Dubrow. I mean, to attract three defenders near you to, and to somehow find a wide-open Lowy. You know, Lowy does the easy part. All he has to do is put one off the glass and in, and it was Dubrow that made it, that made it tough. Velasquez daily losing possession. He feeds it back to Mick. His long three-pointer is up. No good. And the Dolphins down by 10. Yeah, you know what, Mike? And it's not like they're tough shots. I mean, the Dolphins are being left open. You know, the, uh, the window closes quickly, but those are open looks. Those are real 
you know, I'm not going to say they're easy shots, but those are the ones you want to take, and they're just simply not falling. The steam over to Mick, now in the corner to Velasquez. It is open three, is good. Dolphins needed that one, Dave. Oh, without a doubt, and Velasquez has made a lot of those type of baskets, the ones that they desperately need, and, you know, the Dolphins are just three of ten from downtown beyond the arc. They've only taken seven other shots. Minus the 10 three-pointers. Lowry with the basketball. He makes the extra pass over to Lima. His three-pointer is no good. But Lowry able to tip the ball out to Dubrow. He can't hit that shot. Fight for the rebound. And we're going to have a jump ball. This time possession arrow will go the Dolphins' way. The Dolphins are going to get their first look from Brian Gomez, who did not play last night. So he's as fresh a legs as you're going to get for the Dolphins. He replaces Austin Mick. Yeah, so Gomez checking into the game. Like Dave says, for the first time in this tournament, as the Dolphins down by seven with the ball. But he too, Mike, is a distance threat. He's not really the type to, to you know, penetrate or to drive in. So he's going to sit back at that three-point line and look for something easy. That steam throwing the ball to Delahanty. Delahanty had turned to the basket as they feed that ball inside to Lima. His shot is up no good, and Desteem up to grab the rebound. That's a tough play for Wheaton. They had a three-on-two break and took a really difficult shot. Feed inside that time to Latunji. That shot's no good. Adiola two of six on the afternoon. And he thought he was interfered with, and so did the CSI bench. Nothing called on that as the fouls have remained three each. Dubrow with the basketball able to drive it into the hoop. That'll be out of bounds. Last touched by the line, so it will be Dolphin basketball. Christian Kopech and Andrew Cartalis have come back in for CSI. And Aaron Williams has returned for um, Wheaton, which will go really big now, Mike, as Lowy and Wheaton are both in the game against the Dolphins, whose biggest player right now is Christian Kopech, who mainly plays on the arc. Yeah, so we'll see how the Dolphins handle that defensively as Kopech drives to the hole, but he can't hit the shot. Williams grabs the rebound, and here comes Cook. Dubrow working the ball out over to Carlisle, guarded by Cartalis. Now back to Dubrow. Dubrow sudden steps his way inside, looking for somewhere to go to with the basketball. He feeds it inside to Carlisle. He can't hit the shot, but he will draw the foul. What I don't understand, though, is that Wheaton offensively, they have Aaron Williams like six feet beyond the arc. He's not even involved in the offensive play, and that just seems dubious to me. I don't know if we can get another look at that, Mike, but I don't even think he was on the screen. And, the, and Wheaton is going big. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. So Carlisle will go to the free throw line. He's an 82% free throw shooter, and he hits the first to make it a 26-18 Lion lead. One more upcoming. That one is no good. It caught Tallis grabs the rebound for the Dolphins. Destine with the basketball, handing the ball off to Gomez. Now Kopech in the corner to Cartalis. Dolphins work the ball around with their steam now. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Velasquez looking to feed that ball across, but fed it right to Lowry. And here come the Lions. Carlisle, bounce pass inside to Williams. Ball on the floor. And the Dolphins able to come away with it as it's their steam with the basketball now for CSI. Gomez over to their steam, looking to work against Cook. Destim, a nice feed inside to Kopech. Tough shot, can't make it. Yeah, Destim with a beautiful move. And, you know, I think the fans right near us, Mike, are like imploring the Dolphins to drive in on some of these Wheaton players who are small. And uh, Dolphins have been a little gun shy. That time Destim took advantage and almost and had a wide open uh, Kopech. Lowry misses his first shot of the night. He wanted the foul. Is a beautiful feed ahead of Gomez, but he can't hit the shot. It's like a force field around that rim now for the Dolphins. They can't buy a bucket. Now down to 33% shooting. Dubrow, a nice hesitation move, draws the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. Have an opportunity to look at that uh, last play against Carlisle. And and would, sorry, Mike. Looks like we're going to have a whistle and a timeout. Take it on the floor. Six minutes, 49 seconds remaining here in the first half. Lines 26, Dolphins 18. You're watching 18th Annual Tournament of Heroes coverage on CSI Sportsnet, CSIDolphins.com.
champions know how to seize opportunities. When they see moments of greatness unfold right before their eyes, they push as hard as they possibly can. And then they push harder because the heart of a champion never settles, never quits, and never stops giving its all. We are champions. We are division two. We go big, we give it everything we've got, and we win on the field, on our campuses, in our communities, for our causes, in our careers. We rise to become champions in everything we do. We are Division II and there are no limits here. We make our time count. We set our own path. We become champions on our terms. It's time to up your game because we're here to play and learn. But most importantly, we're here to discover ourselves, our vision, our heart, our drive to achieve every goal we aim for because we want to be champions at the highest level, life. At Division II, the opportunities are here. Are you ready? We're back with six minutes and 49 seconds remaining here in this first half, and Wheaton finds themselves with a 26 to 18 lead. And uh, Dave, 20 of those points scored by Robbie Lowry and Aaron Williams. Yeah, they've been the, they've been the catalyst. And on the opposite side, you know, the Dolphins scored 44 points in the first half of their game against Curry, but they've been stuck on 18 for for a long time. They haven't scored in over three minutes. They're one of their last seven from the field. And the Dolphins right now just need a bucket just to start feeling better about themselves. They're only seven of 21 from the field, so that's, you know, you can do the math in your head, 33%. And those numbers are not gonna do it. Yeah, and uh, Wheaton now five of six from the free throw line as well, and they find themselves with a 10-point lead once again, which matches their biggest lead of the afternoon. Kopech with the basketball. Nice feed inside to Cartalis, and he's able to lay it up and in. Good looking play by the Dolphins. Cartalis' his first points of the night. Yeah, you can tell where the Dolphins want to take advantage. It's with their speed, trying to, um, you know, get in there. Uh, through the baseline. Cook with the basketball. Cook uses the screen, works it over to Dubrow. Now they feed it inside to Williams. Williams just barreling his way inside, but he'll get called for the travel. Yeah, Kopech was trying to stand his ground. Did you see the nice play by Cartalis to split the defense? Yeah, that's the second time they ran that play. The first time, Dave, it went off the hands of Austin Mick. That time they were able to convert for the layup. Yeah. Mick with the basketball now for the Dolphins. Looking to work against the smaller Cook. Now he gets the ball. Across the floor. And the turnaround jumper is up no good that time, Dave, as Gomez can't hit the jumper. And here comes Dubrow with the basketball. Dubrow looking to work his way against Mick. Kicks it in the corner to Carlisle. Now Williams once again out behind the three-point line, but he feeds it inside to Lowry. His short jumper is up, no good. Gomez grabs the loose ball for the Dolphins. Sorry, Mike, but the offensive set by Wheaton just doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Kopech with the basketball. Kopech spinning his way inside, and that's a tough layup. He's hit, able to hit it, and head coach TJ Tibbs is going to take a quick timeout, so why don't we step aside as well? Five minutes, 24 seconds remaining here in this first half with the score. Lions 28, Dolphins 22. You're watching the 18th annual championship game of the Tournament of Heroes right here on CSI Sportsnet, CSIDolphins.com. damaged where you take it was your decision but insurance companies would like you to think otherwise while they may have a lot of pull it may not always be in the best interest of your car your car will be fixed right and on time what insurance company can argue with that call dependable auto body at 718-44 we're back with five minutes and 24 seconds remaining in this first half as you see that beautiful move by Christian Lopek and uh, Robbie Lowry heads to the bench day for the Lions. Yeah, that's a big win for the Dolphins. Cook with the basketball. 
Cook looking to work his way inside against Cartalis. Now he works the ball across. A nice defensive play that time as Ripley loses possession. They feed it ahead of the field to Gomez, and it sure looked like he might have been shoved a little bit from behind. No call, but the Dolphins have closed to within four. Dave. Yeah, Dolphins are playing with a little bit of pace now. You can see a little bit of pep in their step. They're challenging on the perimeter. They're not giving a lot of open, open space for Williams. 6-0 run now for the Dolphins as it's Cook with the basketball. Now for the Lions, work, it, work against Vasquez, and he's able to draw the foul. It looked like he might have traveled before the uh, foul, but uh, he has an opportunity to see Gomez uh, get that layup, and Cook will go to the free throw line. It's a 50-50 call, Mike. You know, Cook was just hanging all over Velasquez, too, as he shot that. A little bit out of control, you know, might have shuffled his feet a little bit. It's a, it's a decent call. I'm not going to say it's a bad call, but it could have went either way. As Cook goes to the free throw line for the first time, and he hits there, hit the first. Oh, well, yeah, that's a travel. Lines now six of seven from the free throw line. Yeah, you know, Cook was just out of control. He just didn't know where he was. One more upcoming for Evan. His second free throw is up and in, and so he hits them both, and... Wheaton doing a nice job from the free throw line, seven of eight, and that's the difference in the game as the Lions lead by six is that time Destine takes the ball to the basket and he'll draw the foul. Yeah, you look at this lineup, Mike, there's no Adiola Latunji in there, there's no Zeris, there's no Delahanty. Christian Kopech is a senior there, but that's a, it's a young crew out there on the court. And, you know, Rigo Destine, you could see him taking the leadership role there, attacking the basket, trying to make something happen, and now converting the first of two free throws. As we go, hits the first. One more upcoming for Destine. His second is up, off the rim, no good, so he splits the pair, and the Dolphins are down by five. Dubrow with the basketball. Dubrow working it up over to Mangel Mangelo. Now they're able to work the ball back in the corner to Cook. Cook going to draw the foul on the outside. As that's going to be the 17th foul on the Dolphins, Dave. Yeah, the fouls are starting to accumulate now. The Dolphins were stuck at three for a long time, and they've picked up four fouls now inside of the last three or four minutes. And yeah. now it's going to put Wheaton at the line from here on in. Yeah, a couple of touch fouls, Dave, against the Dolphins on their last possessions. Robbie Lowy checking right back in. Evan Cook will go to the free throw line. Yeah, Lowy's been outstanding, and now the Dolphins have to contend with him. As that free throw is up and in. And contending with him will be Christian Kopech, who's now been on the floor for a little while himself, banging around with Williams. So I think what Wheaton is hoping for is that Williams roughed up Kopech enough in the last two or three minutes to now give uh, Lowy some opportunities on the inside against him. Wheaton shooting just under 75% from the free throw line as, as a team, and they're now 8 of 10 for the afternoon. Mick with the basketball. Mick kicking the ball up over to Cartalis. His shot will be blocked. I don't know what Kopech was doing on that play, Dave, because it was off the... Uh, Lions, but it's Lion basketball. Dubrow with the basketball, looking to work against Gomez. Dubrow kicking the ball in the corner. Now it's Cook. Cook feeding the ball inside. As that's knocked away beautifully that time by the Dolphins. Yeah, Rigo is far and away the Dolphins' best defensive player, and he made it show right there. So we're going to have a timeout on the floor with 3 minutes 42 seconds remaining here in this first half. Dolphin Trail 31-25, and we'll take a break, and we'll be right back. Black on Staten Island, a top five wing joint in America by Food and Wine Magazine. Serving daily lunch and dinner at the bar or on the floor. Perfect for family and group parties with top shelf drink and delicious food. From great times with good friends. Live sports and watch parties. 
to Staten Island's hottest nightlife. The Kettle Black features live music and DJs weekly. The Kettle Black features daily and nightly food and drink specials. The best Staten Island has to offer is at the Kettle Black. We'll see you there at the Kettle Black, located on 415 Forest Avenue, Staten Island. We're back with three minutes and 42 seconds remaining in this first half as you have an opportunity to see that beautiful defensive play by Rigo Destin. Dolphins with three blocks on the afternoon, Dave, and have really tightened up defensively over the last couple of minutes. Yeah, for sure. They've constricted the space that Wheaton has had to move around, especially underneath, and they got to continue the pressure here because they're still down by six. So it's Cook with the basketball now. Ten seconds remaining on the shot clock. He feeds it over to Debro. Debro looking to work against Destine. He kicks the ball up over to Mangello, who's able to put that one up and in. Yeah, nice elevation that time. Sam Manginello with the basket. And the Lions now have their eight-point lead. Mick with the basketball, looking to work against Ripley. Now it's Destine. Destine pulling up. That long three-pointer is up no good. And Cook grabs the rebound. And Destine looking to kind of take over the game for the Dolphins and might have got a little greedy that time. Dubrow with the basketball, looking to work against Cook Tallis. That time a nice feed inside and Manginello Back-to-back -back baskets, he now has four, and the Lions have their lead back to 10. Yeah, I believe that was Dubrow's sixth assist of the game. Yeah, he's playing really well here this afternoon as that shot's up and no good. Dolphins now shooting under 36% on the afternoon as that's Manginello with the basketball, feeding the ball back into the corner. Now it's Ripley. Ripley, long cross pass to Cook, and his three-pointer is good. And the Lions have gotten hot from the field once again, Dave, and they've opened their lead to 13. And conversely, the Dolphins have connected on one of their last 11 three-pointers. Destine with the basketball, and he's going to get called for the travel, and Dolphins can't afford another turnover there, Dave. Turnover number six for the Dolphins. Yeah, well, listen, when you're being outshot 50% to 35%, when you're shooting 3 of 13 from beyond the arc, and... You know, um, you can't afford to lose statistics like turnovers and rebounds, and the Dolphins are losing both of those as well. Yeah. So far, Latunji held to four points, came in averaging 22 and a half points per game after his monster game yesterday. But he's been, on the, he's been on the bench the last seven minutes. Yeah, too, Dolphins, Wheaton did a nice job keeping him in check while he was in the game. Is now Ripley able to put that shot up and lay it up and in. And understanding that Kopech has been out there for a long time, probably the longest stretch of the season for him, the Dolphins are starting to lose their interior defensive presence. Yeah, Gomez has been out on the floor for a while too, Dave, as that's Mick putting up that long three-pointer. That's no good. Austin now one of four from the afternoon, and it's Ripley with the ball for the Lions. Dubro putting up that long three-pointer. It's in and out. Fight for the rebound. Nice play by Gomez. And here comes Desti with the basketball. Kopech looking to take the ball inside. His layup is up no good. He's been able to get it to the basket, Dave, but only uh, able to hit one of his layups. Yeah, Dolphins look like they're running out of gas, Mike. I mean, they really do. It's just been, you know, slogging out there a little bit. Under one minute remaining here in this first half as the ball goes up over to Lima. That shot's up no good. The putback by Ripley is no good. And Gartalis with the ball now for the Dolphins. Destine over to Kopech. Kopech putting up that long three-pointer. It's in and out. And here comes Dubro with the rebound for the Lions. Dubro stopping and popping. That's no good. And Gartalis grabs the rebound for the Dolphins. His fourth rebound of the afternoon. Surprised at the shot by Dubrow. Got the Dolphins kind of, you know, ailing a little bit, a lot of hands on hips, and, um, you know, good chance to kind of pound it inside. Three second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. As that's Destine with the basketball, looking to work against Lima. Destine driving the ball to the basket. His layup is up no good. As that shot thrown across court and still a second left. So that time Wheaton misjudging the clock a little bit, Dave, and it'll be Dolphin basketball. Yeah, and this will be an unbelievable, um, 
you know, swing if the Dolphins were able to hit something here with a second, go into the locker room on a high note. So I'm sure we'll be joined at halftime by head basketball coach T.J. Tibbs, David, and it'll be interesting to get his impressions of this first half. Oh, yes, indeed. Dolphins almost five minutes without a point. Clotalis with the basketball as that shot won't count. No, it won't count. They started the they started the um, clock way before Cartelis even touched it. A little gun shy or a little too um, trigger happy, I guess, with that second. So Dolphins will put a second left, and Cartelis will get at least one triple before he gets the launch. Yeah, so let's see what uh, the Dolphins come up with. Dolphins do practice this play. Aziris getting the ball out over to uh, Latunji, who checked back into the game for that last second shot. That's up no good. So Latunji will go to halftime, two of seven from the field, and just four points as the Dolphins find themselves down 15 in that first half. And we're nice enough to be joined by head men's basketball coach T.J. Tibbs and Coach, the Dolphins got off to a good start. You hurt, you hit your first couple of shots, but Wheaton's been very tough here in this first half. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Uh, it's tremendous. They're spreading the floor. Their point guard's really good getting to the lane, making plays for other people. Uh, they're cutting off his drives. We're getting a little lost on defense, but it's got to be a little bit smarter and a little bit tougher on the defensive end. Uh, Coach, this is the second game you guys are playing in uh, less than 24 hours. You played just eight plays off the bench. Has fatigue been a little bit of a factor here in absolutely this first not. half? No, absolutely not. Okay, yeah, because we saw Adiola on the bench for a long spell. Uh, Zeris, is that to conserve some of them for a good stretch in the second half? No, it's because they're not playing defense. So <laughs> i got to play the guys who are going to attempt to play defense. Uh, we could lose by 40 to anybody out there. So if we're going to lose by 40 or if we're going to lose or if we're going to go down, go down with the kids who are trying to execute what we're trying to do and do them right. So and they're two of my older guys. They understand what's going on. So, um, But if they want to be out there on the floor, we know Adio can put the ball in the basket, of course. But if he doesn't guard, it doesn't matter. All right, understood. You know, TJ, you have 20 minutes to turn this around. It's plenty of time in basketball land. What do you have to do in the second half to get well, we back just have to it? regroup, regather, uh, get our energy. Uh, make sure we're staying to what we're trying to do defensively. I thought we did a great job on the big kid, but it's the mark of a good team. The big kid is, is really good, Williams. Uh, we did a great job, but they have other players that can play. They're hitting shots. And I thought we getting a bunch of good shots <clears throat> on offense, layups, open threes. But the bottom line is in the game basketball, the ball's got to go in the basket. Thanks a lot for coming over and joining us, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thanks for having me. That's head men's basketball coach T.J. Tibbs as the Dolphins find themselves down by 15. And, you know, Wheaton played a very strong first half, Dave, against the Dolphins. Yeah, and, what I, you know, I thought they kept the CSI off balance defensively, Mike. I think when CSI um, really dedicated itself to working on the inside, they had wide open looks defensively from the arc. And, um, and you know, Wheaton made it count. And then when CSI operated on the perimeter defensively, they kicked it on the inside, and Wheaton made it hurt that way as well. So we're at halftime. The Dolphins find themselves down by a score of 40 to 25. What we're going to do is we'll step aside, we'll take a break for a couple of minutes, and then we'll be back to bring you halftime statistics and get you ready for the start of the second half as you're watching the 18th annual Tournament of Heroes Championship game right here on your voice of everything CSI Sports, CSI Sportsnet, CSIDolphins.com. Hobra, a taco joint, Staten Island, where we're proud to have shared our family first spirit with people from throughout New York City and the world. With indoor dining available both at the bar and on the floor. Or step outside for additional seating and an outdoor bar. Serving beer that's crisp, ice cold, and worthy of a day at the beach. Cocktails that explode with flavor. And great food made with the freshest and healthiest ingredients available. Events feature food and drink specials. Live music. And the best of Staten Island nightlife. Your CSI student ID saves you 10% on your dining order at Hobra. 
visit us at 412 Forest Avenue, Staten Island. When your car is damaged, where you take it is your decision. But insurance companies would like you to think otherwise. While they may have a lot of pull, it may not always be in the best interest of your car. Your car will be fixed right and on time. What insurance company can argue with that? Call Dependable Auto Body at 718-447-4898. The Kettle Black on Staten Island, a top five wing joint in America by Food & Wine Magazine. Serving daily lunch and dinner at the bar or on the floor. Perfect for family and group parties with top shelf drink and delicious food. From great times with good friends. Live sports and watch parties to Staten Island's hottest nightlife. The Kettle Black features live music and DJs weekly. The Kettle Black features daily and nightly food and drink specials. The best Staten Island has to offer is at the Kettle Black. We'll see you there at the Kettle Black, located on 415 Forest Avenue, Staten Island. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. When your car is damaged, where you take it is your decision. But insurance companies would like you to think otherwise. While they may have a lot of pull, it may not always be in the best interest of your car. Your car will be fixed right and on time. What insurance company can argue with that? Call Dependable Auto Body at 718-447-4898. Hi, Meals on Wheels. I'm Marco. I'm a college student, and I volunteer as a driver for Meals on Wheels. I think it's awesome meeting these people. I mean, they're so interesting. They've had so many wonderful experiences in life. Your community helps to raise you up into the person that you become. Meals on Wheels is a great way to give back to that community. Hobra, a taco joint, Staten Island but we're proud to have shared our family-first spirit with people from throughout New York City and the world. With indoor dining available both at the bar and on the floor. Or step outside for additional seating and an outdoor bar. Serving beer that's crisp, ice cold, and worthy of a day at the beach. Cocktails that explode with flavor. great food made with the freshest and healthiest ingredients available. Events feature food and drink specials, live music, and the best of Staten Island nightlife. Your CSI student ID saves you 10% on your dining order at Hobra. Visit us at 412 Forest Avenue, Staten Island.
Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. The Kettle Black on Staten Island, a top five wing joint in America by Food and Wine Magazine. Serving daily lunch and dinner at the bar or on the floor. Perfect for family and group parties with top shelf drink and delicious food. From great times with good friends. Live sports and watch parties. To Staten Island's hottest nightlife. The Kettle Black features live music and DJs weekly. The Kettle Black features daily and nightly food and drink specials. The best Staten Island has to offer is at the Kettle Black. We'll see you there at the Kettle Black, located on 415 Forest Avenue, Staten Island. We're back here at halftime where the College of Staten Island trails Wheaton College by a score of 40 to 25. And, you know, Dave, we mentioned Wheaton coming into this game averaging 87 points a game. Dolphins played well yesterday offensively in the first half, scored 44 points. A little bit different story here tonight. The Dolphins just with 25. Yeah, and they didn't score, I think, for the last four and a half, five minutes of that first half, Mike. And Wheaton certainly took advantage of that absence in scoring. And, you know, you can see the numbers have just been tilted. They have not been favorable to the home team. And that's really been the difference in the scoring, Mike. Yeah, and uh, Adiola Latungi, as we mentioned, just two of six from the field, just four points in that first half. Joe Zeres hit both of his shots and uh, finished with six points in just seven minutes of play. And, you know, we spoke to head coach T.J. Tibbs at halftime, and he wants a little bit more defense out of his club. He sent a message to his marquee players, uh, you know, Mike, and during the timeouts, um, you know, I would have my headset half on, half off, and I could hear him as clear as a bell, um, raising his voice. It's not like TJ. You know, he's animated. Sure, he may he stomps around, and he does raise his voice. But he was he was yelling, and he was yelling from the time that the timeout started till the timeouts ended. And he wants to see some motivation out of his team. I think he sent a clear message, um, you know, with the five kids he had on the floor that kind of went the entire way that last five or six minutes. Um, he says fatigue is not a factor. You know, we have to take him at his word, and let's see – you know, what happens in this second half, um, I know what has to happen is those numbers that you see on the right of your screen, those need to improve. Yeah, you know, Dolphins need to do a better job. They've been out-rebounded 25-18, and, you know, Dolphins did a nice job distributing the basketball yesterday and very nice assist-to-baskets ratio. Uh, they do have five assists on ten baskets. But 10 baskets and 20 minutes of basketball, Dave, usually isn't going to be enough. Yeah, and don't forget, the Dolphins hit their first two three-pointers of the game, and they started the game out with a 6 nothing lead. And you see the three-point shooting. They finished 3 of 15. That means they went 1 of 13 in their final, um, you know, uh, 13 shots from, the, from beyond the arc. And, you know, when almost half of your shots are from beyond the arc, you got to hit those shots. I mean, if you're, it's one thing if you're taking – you know, seven, eight, nine three-pointers a game, and you know what, you miss six or seven of them, all right, you're not reliant on the three-pointer in, in that case. It's totally fine. But when your offense is predicated on your ability to shoot the three, when you're shooting them at just 20%, that's going to, that's gonna, you know, you're going to see the results of that on the scoreboard. And that's why the Dolphins are sitting at 25 points after scoring 103 in 50 minutes, you know, yesterday. You know, 25 isn't going to cut it in the half. And the Dolphins doing a nice job against Aaron Williams, holding him to just six points and four rebounds in that first half. But Robbie Lowy, Dave, really hurt the Dolphins. Six of eight shooting, including two of two from the three-point line, 14 points and six rebounds. Yeah, and remember how he hurt them, too. I mean, in the, in the beginning, it was, um, you know, inside, um, you know, converting those layups and then, when, when the Dolphins concentrated their efforts into the inside game and guarding their, you know, guarding Wheaton on the inside, he stepped back from beyond the arc and, and shot two three-pointers like it was nothing. Um, you know, unguarded, uh, you know, but just, uh, just, you know, made him count, made it look easy. 
and he's 6 of 8 from the floor, and he's 0 for his last two. He started 6 of 6 and 2 of 2 from downtown. He's been great, 14 uh, points, and tied for the team lead with six rebounds. You know, it's one in a long line of Wheaton players who have played very well um, in this first half. Yeah, and you know, other than Joe Zeres, who hit uh, both of his uh, shots from the field, Dave, no other Dolphin player uh, is shooting 50% except Velasquez, who was one of two. Yeah, and the Dolphins bench today because we knew that they would be important because of all the basketball the Dolphins played uh, last night. CSI's bench is 3 of 11 so far and 1 of 4 from downtown. Uh, they've also only have two rebounds and two assists. So, uh, you know, we know the Dolphins are gonna, not going to get a huge contribution from their bench because they don't go very deep. But uh, the Dolphins need all the help that they can get. And when their starters are having difficulty and when they're having problems like Latunji and Zeris were having defensively, you need th those players to come off your bench and play strong. And, Dave, this is the final non-conference or the non-CUNY game, I should say, for the Dolphins on the schedule as they'll finish the season with 14 games in a row against CUNYAC opponents. Yeah, that's a really good point, Mike, that you make because this is their final opportunity to really show what they can do outside the conference. Um, you know, the CUNY conference, uh, you know, definitely is going to come with its set of, of um, you know, um, challenges because the Dolphins are just one and one inside the CUNY. But um, this is a big opportunity for the Dolphins to show what they can do against a good formidable opponent. So we're underway here in the second half. The Dolphins bring out their same starting lineup as the first half as Williams goes in. A nice block by Zeris once again. Plays go to the floor. Yet to have a whistle. And now we're going to have a jump ball as it looks like Williams might have gotten hit in the face. The possession now will go to the Dolphins. So a nice start for the Dolphins defensively here in the second half. Yeah, TJ Tibbs won a defense. How was that? Jay Zeris fronting up, getting another clean block shot. Dolphins winning it you know, via the scrum, and that truly did look like a rugby scrum, Mike. It took a while to get sorted out. Second block of the game for Zeris, and the Dolphins with their basketball on their first possession. Zeris backing the ball out, bounce pass now goes inside to Latunji. Latunji working against Lowry, that shot is up no good. So Adiola now two of seven from the field. Yep, it's a kid who's averaging well over 50% from the field, he's two of seven. Williams out by the three-point line, now feeds it up over to Cook. His long three-pointer is up no good. And Latunji grabs the rebound for the Dolphins, his third rebound of the afternoon. Just over one minute into this second half, both teams looking for their first points. Is driving it inside and laying it up and in is Rigo Desteem. Nice move by Desteem to get the basket. Been very impressed with Rigo and how he's taken ownership sometimes out there on the floor and he and Joe Zeris got into a little bit of an exchange after that I think you know Zeris um, he wanted Zeris to set a, a, a screen for him he never got it and then took issue with it after getting sorted out as we go completes the three-point play and the Dolphins cut the lead down to 12. And there's no such thing as a 12-point shot Mike so at this point the Dolphins have to be just uh, concentrated on just chipping away, winning each minute at a time, one point at a time. Williams out at the three-point line. He feeds it inside to Lowry, who just lays it up and in. And he just did a nice little spin move to the basket, Dave, and had the wide-open lane. Yeah, you know, I told you in the pregame, Mike, I just like Lowry and his sense of where he is on the court. He always seems to be in a good place, like a lot of good court IQ. Latunji hits that jumper. Basket for Ariola. He has six, and the Dolphin deficit down to 12 once again. Feed inside to Williams. He drives down the lane, but instead it'll be an offensive foul as Zeris draws the offensive foul. Yeah, I'd like to see that one again. My guy, you know, Williams takes issue with it. I don't know if I disagree with him per se. I like the call. Let's take a look. Yeah, Joe. What, uh, just the end of it. But. Yeah, he, he moved over quickly <laughs> and settled down quickly and drew the foul. All right, if you say so, Mike, I'll take your call. Vic with the basketball now for the Dolphins as they look to close this lead. As they trail by 12, Mick using the Zeris pick, loses the handle and loses the ball. Dubrow feeding it ahead to Cook, and he lays it up and in. Nice job by Cook, start to finish, to track that ball down and then to convert the other way. Just unlucky play there, unlucky break for Mick with the turnover. 14-point lead once again. 
as Zeres puts up that open three-pointer, and that's no good. And here comes Dubrow with the basketball. Dubrow losing his footing. He'll throw that ball out of bounds. It'll be last touched by the Dolphins. So to remain Lion basketball as Dolphins have turned the ball over seven times on the afternoon. 11 points off of turnovers for the Lions. Dolphins with just four points on six turnovers. As once again, it's Williams able to put the basket in. Yeah, biggest lead of the game now for Wheaton, 16 points. Destim with the basketball. It's Gomez's check back in, and Destim's shot is up and in. Yeah, and he shoots that one over Lowy, who stands at six foot six. Lowy with the basketball, guarded by Cartalis. Now it's Williams at the three point line, and he puts it up and in. And he had a gesture for Zeris after that play, and referees got to be mindful of that. I know they've been going back and forth, but. And that's answered right by, there by the Dolphins as they look to stay in contact in this game, Dave. As Cook, a beautiful crossover dribble. He feeds it inside to Lyons, but he can't complete, Lowy can't complete the layup. But now the Dolphins turn it over and Steve commits the foul. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Cartalis. He got hung up there. You see that three-pointer. Dolphins will take that shot, but... Williams made it look really good. And Gomez, you know, it's one of the few open looks that they've been able to convert. Dol Dolphins to that point, Mike, had only made one out of 14 three-pointers. So Gomez breaks that spell. As Cook misses that free throw. Has another couple of substitutions. Zeris coming out of the game once again, Dave. Cartalis coming out of the game. Cartalis guilty, guilty of that turnover, but if you're the Dolphins, you have to be able to take advantage of these mistakes, and they just haven't been able to do it. Boy, and that was a bad defensive sequence by the Dolphins as they're going to take a timeout, and they find themselves down by 16 and really not coming out and playing solid basketball as we have a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of uh, yeah, extracurricular I activity here. Christian Kopech getting into it with one of the players. I think the way Wheaton came off the floor after that turnover, kind of, um, you know, um, you know, very loud. Let's see. Ricardo Ripley and then Christian Kopech both been called with technical fouls, offsetting techs. But I think the way after the timeout was called, Mike, TJ Tibbs was – animated because he didn't feel his team was playing well and then as Wheaton was coming off the court they were very loud and in the face of a couple of Dolphins players doesn't exonerate the Dolphins from going back and retaliating but Christian Kopech took issue with it stayed on Wheaton's side of the floor and then when uh, assistant coach Kurt Manassi tried to step in uh, he was met with the officials and he took exception to that so tempers are flaring a little bit and it's because both teams were jarring but Mike I noticed on the last play when Williams hit that three he kind of made the three-point sign, but he pointed it right in the direction of, of Joe Zeris. And, you know, it's okay to, to, to be demonstrative, but you can't do it in the direction of a player. And, um, and that's exactly what he did. And I think he did it right in front of the CSI fans. The CSI fans saw it. They took exception with it. They start yelling at him, and that's how things kind of progress. you got to stay concentrated on what you're doing on the floor and keep it clean. Both teams are working extremely hard. Don't ruin it with poor sportsmanship. Yeah, so, you know, uh, the uh, teams where we both uh, regroup for a timeout, but, you know, the larger uh, problem if you're a CSI Dolphin fan, Dave, is – Really, Dolphins just not playing as good a game here this afternoon. And that last uh, defensive sequence was a, a perfect example, Dave, is Dolphins allow the offensive rebound and allow Wheaton to take the ball to the basket. And, you know, they're now uh, up by 16 points. And, you know, the Dolphins really need to find a way to play better. And you can see how upset the Dolphin play is making head coach T.J. Tibbs. Yeah, and um, Abdul Rasaka Shola has come into the game for the Dolphins to replace Christian Kopech. And just to sort that out, Mike, the technical foul was called against Christian Kopech for the Dolphins and also uh, to Aaron Williams of, um, of Wheaton. And both of those players are now out of the game. They haven't been taken out of the game, 
just their coaches have given them some rest on the bench. So now it's Destine with the basketball as the Dolphins need to find a way to get some offense here in this second half as Gomez, that off-balance jumper is up no good, but he's able to grab his own offensive rebound. And now the Dolphins will get a new offensive sequence as Destine's jumper is up no good. And Dubrow there to grab the rebound. He feeds it ahead of the field to Lowry, but that pass too far. And now Wheaton turns the basketball over. I time Dubrow a little bit careless, Dave, with the basketball. And lost in the shuffle is Justin Cardenas has come into the game for the Dolphins as well. Now we'll have a media timeout, Mike, because we're under 16 minutes. So we'll step aside and take our first break of the second half. Dolphins trail by a score of 51-35. You're watching Tournament Heroes coverage right here on CSI Sportsnet, CSIDolphins.com. Black on Staten Island, a top five wing joint in America by Food and Wine Magazine. Serving daily lunch and dinner at the bar or on the floor. Perfect for family and group parties with top shelf drink and delicious food. From great times with good friends. Live sports and watch parties. To Staten Island's hottest nightlife. The Kettle Black features live music and DJs weekly. The Kettle Black features daily and nightly food and drink specials. The best Staten Island has to offer is at the Kettle Black. We'll see you there at the Kettle Black, located on 415 Forest Avenue, Staten Island. We're back with 15.44 remaining here in the second half, and the Dolphins find themselves down by 16, Dave. Yeah, you have to um, start thinking about chipping away at this lead, Mike. The Dolphins started off on a, with a little bit of fire underneath them to start this second half. Got it down a little bit, but Wheaton has answered the call. Velasquez now Desteem, and his open three-pointer is good, and he's been a big part of the offense, Dave, here for the Dolphins. He now has 14. Yeah, you look at the way, um, you know, Brian Gomez and Alex Dubrow are going after each other, Mike, too. And it's some physical stuff going on in the backcourt. Lowry now looking to work the ball inside, gets it to Cook. Cook works the ball back to Carlisle, now in the corner to Lowry. Lowry driving the ball to the basket. His floater is up no good. But, uh, but uh, Sakuchewski able to grab the rebound. The putback is no good. The ball tipped around. And Wheaton coming away with the basketball once again. They're now out, out rebounding the Dolphins 32-22. to 22. You can see the youth and inexperience showing here for the Dolphins, their lineup on the floor. Oh, is that time Destim is going to get called for the reach-in? Yeah, Rigo Destim didn't like it, but Rigo is the senior man on that floor right now. Mike playing with a sophomore, a couple, three sophomores. As that shot is blocked away beautifully by Destim, and here comes Velasquez as he's freight trained to the floor, and a foul will be on Evan Cook. Yeah, Velasquez just wasn't sure what to do there, as you see that last three-pointer by Destim, but um, that's going to be the fourth personal foul on the Lions in this half. Dolphins inbound the basketball now as that's Destim, and he's going to pull up for the three-pointer again, and he buries it. 17 for Rigo, and the Dolphins are within 10. Well, if you look at this Dolphins lineup on the floor, who do you look for to score? It's got to be Destim. As Carlisle able to drive it in, his shot is up no good, but once again able to control the rebound is the Lions. As Lowy lays it up and in, he has 18. Yeah, I, I will say that's a good offensive rebound that time by Sokocheski. Long three pointed by Destim is up, no good. Fight for possession. Velasquez comes away with the basketball for the Dolphins. Dolphins are fighting. Gomez now gets the ball out over to Destim. As they work the ball out now. Velasquez with the basketball. Velasquez's shot is up, no good. And the rebound grab by Cook. Dubrow with the basketball. Working against Gomez. He takes it to the basket. He kicks it out, and we're going to have a whistle. 
and an offensive foul. Yeah, Dubrow has gotten away with that move a few times. But, um, you know, that time he was a little bit off balance and slugged himself into Velasquez, who took the charge. And so that'll be the second on Dubrow. And now Aaron Williams comes back in. And, Mike, you look at the size on the floor right now. Williams, you know, Abdul Rasak Ashola is going to have his hands full with him. And then you mix in Sakacheski at six foot four. There's some big dudes out there against a underwhelming CSI lineup right now as far as height and weight are concerned. Dolphins down by 12 as it's Destine with the basketball, working the ball out over to Gomez. His shot is up no good, and Williams bobbles that ball out of bounds, so the Dolphins get a little bit of a break, and they'll have another offensive opportunity. And again, Mike, you keep saying opportunity. It's an opportunity. The Dolphins have to take advantage of these opportunities. You know, Lions have been stuck at 53 points. Are the Dolphins going to use it to cut into the lead, and now they're guilty of a turnover and a foul? Yeah, it's going to be an offensive foul on the Dolphins. As that foul is going to be called on Cardenas. And that's going to be his first foul of the afternoon. So the Dolphins turn it over, Dave. Yeah, the Dolphins are a negative nine in points off turnovers tonight. So there's another statistic where they're on the wrong end of. Dubrow looking to feed the ball inside. And a couple of back-to-back -back turnovers by uh, the Lions as the Dolphins try to turn up the defensive intensity. And here we go, Mike. Another opportunity off the turnover. Another empty possession for Wheaton. What is CSI going to be able to do um, you know, against another empty Wheaton possession? So let's see. Is it Velasquez with the basketball looking to work against Dubrow? Cladenas. And we're going to have a whistle and a foul. And that foul is going to be on the Lions, as it'll be Macaulay Lima with the foul. Lions now with six team fouls here. A lot of time left in this second half, and the Dolphins will go to the line with the next team foul by the Lions. That's Steam with the basketball. The Steam stutter stepping in. The Steam, the off balance jumper is up no good. And here comes Williams. Williams, beautiful play that time by Desteem, and he comes away with the basketball. Desteem kicking the ball in the corner. Now Cardenas, the floater in the lane is up and in. That's, now that's taking advantage of a turnover, Mike. And now we want a whistle by the Dolphins. As the, <laughs> the Dolphins are all over the court. It's 53-43, 12 minutes and 16 seconds. Remaining here in this second half as we have an opportunity to see a replay on that last Dolphin make, Dave. And, you know, Dolphins, for all their struggles this afternoon, uh, they find themselves down by only 10. Mike, the Dolphins are one or two baskets in a row away from making this a brand new game. I mean, a, a four-point game, a six-point game, that's anybody's game. A 10-point game, you're still a little bit out of reach. Dolphins needed a couple of more possessions. They've amped it up defensively. They're forcing turnovers. Wheaton's missed some pretty easy layups as a result, too. But you got to take advantage of that. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's going to happen. Um, but, you know, the Dolphins really haven't moved through that door. And I think TJ Tiz was so excited to see Justin Cardenas, you know, actually, you know, execute. Uh, you know, you could see he was hesitant about wanting to shoot. But, you know, that's trial by inferno. you got to get in there. you gotta, you got to learn to know when your place is to take a shot. He did. It was a risky shot. It looked off balance. It looked... Helter Skelter, it somehow, some way went in, and that's what you like to see. Yeah, you, most certainly, Dave. And, you know, uh, for Justin, his first basket is a CSI yeah, Dolphin. Yeah, and what a basket. And TJ Tibbs, you know, recognizes that, and so he takes a 30-second timeout to rally his team around. He leaves the same unit on the floor. I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's unspeakable trust right there. That's just great, great stuff. And, you know, if you're if you're – if you're a critic of CSI basketball, you say, well, why isn't TJ playing his veterans? You know, here's an opportunity. Now's the time you put Addy in. Now's the time you put Zeris in. But instead, it's it's no. This is this is the time where, you know, um, three years from now, when Justin Cardenas is a big, you know, influential player, it's moments like these that made him that. So uh, let's hope the Dolphins can continue to utilize these minutes and get themselves back in this game. So let's see how they can do defensively as it'll be Lieber to bring the ball across the midcourt line. 
guarded by Velasquez. His pass nearly stolen away. As they work the ball into the corner and the open three-pointer by Ripley is good. Big basket that time by Ricardo Ripley. It was. He was open. He needs to make that shot and he delivers. Good job by Ripley. 56-43. The Dolphins find themselves down by 13 once again as it's Velasquez who puts up that long jumper. It's up no good. Fight for the rebound. Jump and we're going to have a jump ball. Nice play that time by the Dolphins to yep. force the jump ball. But it will be Lions' possession. Yeah, listen, if, if, if they're going to get the rebound, let them work for the rebound. And Abdul Rashak Rashola got involved. So here comes Lima with the basketball now. He works the ball up over to Ripley. Now feeding it inside to Williams. Williams working his way inside, laying it up and in and drawing the foul. And Williams has an exchange with the, with the fans sitting right next to us too. You can, it's away from your camera at home, but he's been into it with the fans here and they're razzing him a little bit. They're being respectful in the, only, in the best way they can be. And the language hasn't been colorful, so at least it's, it's been PG-13 rated, Mike. Williams going to the free throw line, and his free throw is up and in, so he completes the three-point play, and six points in a row for the Lions, Dave, and they open their lead back to 16. Yep, yep, and again, it comes off the CSI timeout, too, so it's, it hurts even a little bit more. Velasquez, that pull-up jumper is no good, and we're going to have a whistle, and we're going to have a loose ball foul, and that's going to be on the Dolphins as well, Dave. So have an opportunity to see Williams laying that ball up and in, and you know, Williams hasn't uh, been his uh, most effective, still has 11 points, a five of nine shooting, seven rebounds, so still playing well for the Lions. Yep. They feed it inside to Williams. Williams once again works his way inside. Once again, can't hit the shot, but does draw the foul. And Williams was limping a little bit after he had a step over Abdul Rashaka Sola. Yeah, Rashaka Sola kind of went to the ground, committed the foul, and then Williams stumbled, but he'll go to the free throw line to shoot two for Rashaka Sola, Dave. Three personals here in the second half. Yeah. You know, again, all in a substitute role as the Dolphins have sat many of their regular starters. TJ Tibbs told us that. The halftime break, he was not impressed with the way his team was playing defense. He expects more out of them, and it has nothing to do with fatigue. It has to do with just poor play. You look at who's on the court. These are the guys he's rewarding for playing tough. The Dolphins are down by their biggest amount, 17 points, at risk of dropping the Tournament of Heroes Championship here to Wheaton. As Destim driving inside, and he was ridden to the basket, and that time he's going to pick up the foul. As Ricardo Ripley will pick up his first personal of the afternoon. And they'll leave Rigo alone here while some of the youth are going over to assistant coach Kurt Manassi and getting some instructions. Rigo Destim has utilized this time to excel. He's got 14 points. The Dolphins are going to make some wholesale changes after these free throws. Latunji, Zeris, Kartalis all checking in. So those three players will check back into the game as Dolphins find themselves down by 16 points here. Rigo Destim leading the Dolphins and scoring with 18 here tonight. Yeah, now it's officially getting a little late, Mike. So with 11 minutes left, there's still plenty of time. You can overturn this, but now's the time. You have to start making a move here. You gotta use these next four or five minutes to win and, and come to within eight, nine points. So now it's Wheaton with the basketball. Williams, that open three-pointer is up no good. And going up high for the rebound is Latunji. Velasquez's pass inside is going to be knocked out of bounds. So the remain possession of the Dolphins with 25 seconds remaining on the shot clock. You can see Williams on the far end of your screen talking it up with the official. He thought he was hacked on that three-point attempt. As we're going to have a whistle and a foul on the inbounds. That'll be Williams' third personal, I believe. And that's going to lead to free throws as Joe Zeris will get to step up to the free throw line to shoot a one and one And Dolphins need points off of these possessions, Dave. So a big free throw coming up here for Zeris. Dolphins just four of seven from the line tonight. As he hits the first, he'll have one more. Yeah, this and those are so important. Those front ends of the one and one Mike. You and I talk about those all the time. 
Just so important to get this second opportunity, make two out of two. So let's see if he can hit the second one here. As there's a second free throw was up and in, so he hits them both. And the Dolphins creep to within 14. And Zeris now second on the team and scoring with eight points. DeBro with the basketball. Looking to break his way through a double team. Dolphins nearly come away with it, but now it's Williams who's going to get called for the travel. And it will be Dolphin basketball as they try to stay in range here, Dave, to make it a tough game down the stretch. Yeah, you know, again, Mike, opportunities. What do they make of these opportunities? The uh, Wheaton um, Lions are getting Lowy back in the game. I believe they got uh, Carlisle back in. So making some changes here, staying fresh. Let's see if the Dolphins can attack. So Williams goes to the bench. Let's see what the Dolphins could do offensively on this possession as it's Zeris. Zeris looking to bounce the ball inside. It's going to be off the hands of Latunji. So the Dolphins turn the ball over and I believe that is turnover number 10 for the Dolphins. They're a plus one in that category. But again, Mike, another opportunity to score off of a turnover, and the Dolphins come up empty. They only have six points off of 11 Wheaton turnovers. So now it'll be the Lions with the basketball now with 10 minutes remaining here in the second half. A beautiful play that time by Latunji. He feeds it inside to Destine, who lays it up and in. Now the Dolphins down by 12. Again, a point off of a turnover. That's what the Dolphins want. They've been able to get it down to 10 here in the latest stages of this second half as that ball will be knocked out of bounds. And it will remain Wheaton basketball with 17 to shoot. And T.J. Tibbs wants his unit to pressure on the inbounds as well. As you can see, that last takeaway and the good heads-up pass here by Latunji over the outstretched Carlisle to finish. So it'll be Lowy to inbound the basketball now as he gets it up over to Debro. Now works the ball into the corner, feeds it inside to a wide open Evan Cook who lays it up and in. Yeah, Dolphins thought Ripley was going to shoot the three. Instead, he split the waters and was able to find a wide open teammate. And Cook has really hurt the Dolphins tonight, Dave. He has 12 as Zeris driving to the basket. Zeris looking to feed it inside, nearly stolen away, but he's able to regain but now loses possession. Dubro with the basketball, headed to Lowy. His shot is up no good, but we're gonna have a whistle and a foul. And that'll be a foul on the Dolphins. Both teams are over the limit, as Destine will pick up his third personal, and that'll send Robbie Lowy to the free throw line. Yeah, the Dolphins, you know, one step forward, half step back. Mike, two steps forward, one and a half steps back. Every time they get something positive, it seems like they're hurting themselves, be, be a turnover, you know, offensive rebound in that case, a foul off of a miss. It's been a frustrating afternoon for the Dolphins in many ways. Six of 22 from three-point range as well. So Lowy will go to the free throw line. He'll have one more upcoming from the line, a 77 percent free throw shooter coming into the game tonight and his second free throw is up and in he now, now has 19 now something to pay attention to Mike is oh they have changed it they had first flashed up a foul on Rigo Destim it was his third and they changed it to Latunji so Latunji drawing the foul is now it's Latunji working the ball in the corner to Zeris and his three pointer is good and Zeris now three of four including two of three from the three point line he has 11, as we're going to have a blocking foul called on Zeris on that play. Let's get that in slow-mo, Nick, and analyze our third team out there, the officials. Again, it looked like Wheaton was coming in really hot on that play, and Zeris might have gotten back in established position. Sure, we'll get a look at it. We'll get Carlisle on the line as well. So Zeris commits his second personal, nine team fouls on the Dolphins. So they'll be in the double bonus as we have an opportunity to see that play once again. Yeah, and we didn't really get to see Zeris though setting, setting himself. So just caught, caught it right at the end. As you see Carlisle drive down the lane and good call by the yeah, officials. Yeah, yeah, he was backpedaling a little bit. So it will be uh, Destine with the basketball. 
The steam looking to work his way inside, and he's going to draw the foul with eight minutes and 33 seconds remaining, and Dolphins still down by 16. 14, Mike, I think, right? Yeah, 14. 14, 14. I'm sorry. If you're the Dolphins, you want to get this to a seven, eight-point game by the five-minute mark. I think that's the area where you want to see as you Des strike from. As Destine misses the front end of the one and one. Again, Mike, I'm sorry, a half a step forward, one step back. You know, you get a good foul, you get the clock stopped, and then you miss the front end of a one and one. So now it's going to be Dubrow with the basketball. Dubrow, a bounce pass inside to Carlisle. Now over to Lowy, who's been in the lane for about six seconds, who lays <laughs> it up and in. Yeah, Lowy camped out in there a little bit. You know, with all the passing going on underneath there, hard for the officials to see that and call that. Velasquez with the basketball. Now Zeris. Zeris, his floater in the lane is short. And Cook there to grab the rebound. He's played really well for the Lions today, Dave. He has. Yes, he has. And Another know, freshman think, player, Dave. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, no, no question. And Dubrow with the basketball. Now working the ball out in the corner. And the floater by Cook is good. He continues to hurt the Dolphins. He now has 14 points on the afternoon. And he shot very efficiently, Dave, as well. And it's the biggest lead now for Wheaton, 18 points. As that jumper by Latunji is good, and Dave, he just hasn't been able to get on track here this afternoon. No, and just never found a good rhythm. He's three of nine from the floor. Ball worked in the corner. Cook, his open jumper is up no good, and Destine grabs the rebound now for the Dolphins. Cartalis. Now Zeres. Zeres puts up that three-pointer, and that's good. And he's been the most efficient player offensively, Dave, for the Dolphins. Three of four from the three-point line. He now has 14. Yeah, 14 points, Mike, in 14 minutes. Cook with the basketball. Now gets the ball over to Dubrow. It's going to be knocked out of bounds. And last touch by Dubrow, who can't believe it. And it will be... Dolphin basketball after the timeout on the floor. So we'll step aside, take a break. Six minutes, 46 seconds remaining here in this second half. Lions lead by a score of 69-54. We'll take a timeout, and we'll be right back. Hobra, a taco joint, Staten Island, where we're proud to have shared our family-first spirit with people from throughout New York City and the world. With indoor dining available both at the bar and on the floor. Or step outside for additional seating and an outdoor bar. Serving beer that's crisp, ice cold, and worthy of a day at the beach. Cocktails that explode with flavor. And great food made with the freshest and healthiest ingredients available. Events feature food and drink specials, live music, and the best of Staten Island nightlife. Your CSI student ID saves you 10% on your dining order at Hobra. Visit us at 412 Forest Avenue, Staten Island. We're back here with six minutes, 46 seconds remaining in the game. And Dave, the Dolphins trying to remain in contact but find themselves down by, uh, by 15. Yeah, and unfortunately, the Dolphins just haven't done enough well in this game. And, you know, even when they've had some glimmers of hope, some light at the end of a few tunnels, they've just hurt themselves with fouls, with, you know, not hitting, you know, the, the rebounds hard enough. Uh, they've been out-rebounded. 42 to 26 in this game. That's a negative 16, a negative five on the offensive glass. Uh, you know, they failed to hit some open layups. And I think the biggest statistic is that they just haven't made enough of Wheaton's mistakes. So they haven't really let Wheaton um, off the hook. They've let Wheaton off the hook too often in this game. So the Dolphins with the basketball as Cartalis' shot is up no good. Cartalis with just two points on the afternoon. And Dubrow with the basketball now for the Lions. 
Gomez back into the game for the Dolphins. He's got extended playing time as that time uh, the reverse layup attempt by Ripley is no good, but he'll draw the foul. A great job by Debro, who's approaching a triple-double. He's got seven points, eight rebounds, but he does have the 11 assists. And the Tunji back on the bench day for the Dolphins. Yep. Well, Tunji, three of nine on the day after a 38-point effort last night. One more free throw is up and in, and the Dolphins find themselves down by 17 with just six minutes, 19 seconds remaining in the game. So the Dolphins will inbound the basketball, and they need to get on a run offensively and see what they could do as Zeris puts up the, another three-pointer. That's no good. And this time going up high for the rebound is Lima for the Lions. Carlisle with the basketball, handing it to DeBrow, and now Gomez will pick up the foul. The Dolphins in the double bonus, so that will lead to a pair of free throws for Wheaton. Yeah, Mike, and in the game where the Dolphins have only shot 36% and 31% from long range, they have 17 points to make up now in six minutes, so it's going to take just about every possession from here on in to make some sort of difference in the scoreboard, not to mention the fact that you've got to keep Wheaton off of it. And I think this is just too insurmountable a deficit. It's a disappointing game, Mike, if it ends this way because I think the Dolphins are better than um, what should be an 18-point deficit at this point. And I, I don't think the Dolphins are that far away from a team like Wheaton to be this far gone with six minutes left. Yeah, you know, it, uh, uh, Adiola Latunji came in averaging 22 and a half points a game Really uh, struggled from the field here this afternoon and has just six and finds himself on the bench as the Dolphins get called for the kickball. Yeah, and you know what, Mike? If you're a Dolphins fan, if you're a Dolphins player, this is game 11, and you got a lot more to go. you got 14 more to play, and so you haven't hit the halfway mark, and if you can't use this to get better, then you've used it the wrong way. So uh, the Dolphins have to figure out what they did wrong in this game and uh, work on it and get better for the future because of it. So it's Carlisle with the basketball. A wild reverse layup is no good, but Williams is there to catch it and put it back in, and he's got 17, Dave. Yeah, and he's going to terrorize opponents for the next three years, this, this young man. It's just a really big force underneath. Velasquez, a nice feed to Destine, but his layup is up no good, but he will draw the foul, and he will go to the free throw line. Yeah, Williams... Um, has played 18 minutes and has 17 points, eight rebounds. Yesterday he had 29 points in 27 minutes, so statistical plus minus is off the charts for him. Yeah, he knows how to get the ball to the basket, and you know he's just a freshman, just learning really the game at the collegiate level, so you could expect he'll get much better as Velasquez will check in for, and Austin Mick will come into the game for the Dolphins, Dave, haven't seen him for a while. Yeah, and Velasquez's line is not a pretty one by any stretch, but he played hard um, and didn't come off the floor for a long time. Only one of five from the floor, but he's played 21 minutes. And Austin Mick just one of four, Dave, and if you remember, he hit the first shot of the game for the yeah. Dolphins. Yes, he did, and it was like right at the beginning of the game. Williams out by the three-point line. He pulls that one up no good. Gomez there to grab the rebound, and... Fight for possession is uh, Lima kind of undercut Gomez, and he'll get called for the foul. I'll tell you what, it's nice to see Lima playing with so so in, so much intensity. Over four and a half minutes left. The Lions are well ahead by 19 points. They're still playing extremely hard. We knew traveled down from Massachusetts just four minutes and 38 seconds away from a pretty uh, – Enjoyable trip to Staten Island. Yeah, we've had Wheaton of Illinois here one other time in the Tournament of Heroes. They won the tournament, and now Wheaton of Massachusetts is looking to do the same and are just a few minutes away from doing so. The Dolphins 17-18 and 18 all time in the Tournament of Heroes. If they obviously 
this score holds, they'll be 17 and 19 overall, and they'll remain with four championships in 18 years. One more free throw up coming here for Gomez. His second is up and in, so he hits the pair. And the Dolphins will try to pressure the inbound pass, but it's Dubrow with the basketball. Dubrow getting the ball out over to Lima. Now it's Cook. As Wheaton will look, probably look to run some shot clock down here. Cook with the basketball. He's played very well, especially in the second half. And he'll go to the free throw line and look to extend this Lion lead. Yeah, and last, last night, we, uh, Evan Cook only had three points in 22 minutes. He was one of seven from the floor. And tonight, 14 points in 23 minutes. So night and day difference in the way Evan Cook has played in this tournament. Yeah, and he's only three of seven day from the free throw line. He came in as a 72% free throw shooter here tonight. So he's played well, but has not hit his free throws. But he splits the pair there. And he now has 15 points as the Lions have an 18 point lead. The steam with the basketball, the steam floating inside that shot's up no good. And then he's going to pick up the loose ball foul. And for Destine, that'll be foul number three on him. And the Dolphins are also over the limit. So in the double bonus is Wheaton. And our game is slowly grinding to a halt here as with four minutes and 12 seconds left. A lot of action at the free throw line here for both teams. Yeah, Dolphins with 20 personal fouls in this game. Wheaton with 15 and... You know, for the, most, for the most part, Dave, this tournament has been uh, very well officiated and not that many fouls called. The officials are doing a pretty good job of letting the plays play out on the floor. Yeah, I think every game, all four games have been well officiated. There hasn't been any glaring, glaringly bad calls. And, you know, I don't think uh, when you're not talking about the refs, I think that's a good thing. And we haven't really had much to say about them. So that's all good. As Cook now with 17 points and the Lions with their biggest lead of the game, it's 20. Destine feeds it up over to Zeris. Zeris looking for somewhere to go. He looks for Mick. Instead, the pass will be stolen away by Cook as the Dolphin play continues to struggle as Williams lays it up and in. And all of a sudden, Williams with 19 points. Yeah, very de deceivingly... Potent offensive player. Cartalis puts up that open three-pointer. That's no good. Cartalis really struggling uh, from the field here today for the Dolphins, Dave. Yeah, he's one for six overall and one for four from, uh, excuse me, 0 for four from the three-point line. Pass comes out to Williams at the three-point line. He tries to dribble his way inside. He's going to kick it out of bounds. So it will be Dolphin basketball with three minutes, 17 seconds remaining, and there'll be a timeout on the floor. So let's step aside and take a break. Three minutes, 17 seconds remaining in the game. Lions lead 79-57. You're watching men's basketball coverage right here on CSI Sportsnet, CSIDolphins.com. Champions know how to seize opportunities. When they see moments of greatness unfold right before their eyes, they push as hard as they possibly can. And then they push harder because the heart of a champion never settles, never quits, and never stops giving its all. We are champions. We are division two. We go big, we give it everything we've got, and we win on the field, on our campuses, in our communities, for our causes, in our careers. We rise to become champions in everything we do. We are Division II and there are no limits here. We make our time count. We set our own path. We become champions on our terms. It's time to up your game because we're here to play and learn. But most importantly, we're here to discover ourselves, our vision, our heart, our drive to achieve every goal we we're back with three minutes, 14 seconds remaining here in the second half. Dolphins down by 22. 
As it's Velasquez with the basketball, feeding it out over to Delahanty. The three-pointer by Cardenas is up no good. And Lowry there to grab the rebound. Ninth rebound for Lowry here this afternoon. As it's Wheaton with the basketball and a 17-point lead. As the ball is fed open. The open three-point shot is up no good. And the rebound grabbed by Vol the Dolphins as it's Velasquez with the basketball now. Over to Delahanty. And Wheaton starting to put in some of their reserves. Mike Zach Dagan, 5'9", sophomore, is in the game. Nice move to the basket that time by Gomez as he flashed the ball to the hoop, and he has six. And it's a 20-point game, and we're going to have a timeout here taken by the Lions. The 30 second uh, timeout, Dave. So let's keep it right here. The Dolphins look like they're going to drop the game here this afternoon, Dave. They'll be back in action uh, after the new year. 14 games coming up for the Dolphins against Cuniac opponents. What are the Dolphins looking to do here in the second half of the season? Well, they have exactly one week till their next game, John Jay. So it's plenty of time to kind of get back to the drawing board, have a good week of practice. Obviously, They'll get some time off because of the New Year holiday, the college being closed and all that. But you know, I think the Dolphins, uh, they, they got their youth a little bit more experience. I think, you know, these back-to-back -back games have not been kind to them. Uh, when they were in Florida, they, they struggled hard in back-to-back -back games. They all struggled, they struggled in this one pretty mightily. It's just a chance to kind of hit the reset button, Mike, and get yourself ready for a 14-game stretch that where every team's going to be gunning for them. The Dolphins moved up from Division Three to Division Two. That means that every Division Three team in their former conference, the CUNY Athletic Conference, is going to be gunning for them. Dolphins have a giant bullseye on their backs, and they've got to be ready. Yeah, so Dagan hits that three-pointer. That's his first basket of the game. As Wheaton continues to open up their lead now to 23 points. And Yoanathan Joseph, number 23, and Patrick Ode have also come in for Wheaton. That's Gomez hits that three-pointer. He scored five in a row, and the Dolphins, and he now has nine as it's a 20-point game. Dagan with the basketball. Now Carlisle working the ball across now to Owen. His three-pointer is up no good, and Delahanty grabs the rebound for the Dolphins. Gomez, Velasquez, Velasquez stopping, popping, and that shot is short as... Velasquez now just one of six from the field, Dave. Yeah, it's been a tough, tough uh, afternoon for him after a very lengthy night on the floor last night. Wheaton with the basketball as that pass will go out of bounds as we have a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sam Manginello will come in for the Lions as well. He's played in this game but used very sparingly, and he's going to um, send to the bench Robbie Lowy, who in my opinion – Mike, without question, is our MVP of this tournament. I know Aaron Williams has done terrifically as well, but Lowy, in my opinion, I think, pound for pound, is the best player on the Wheaton team. Yeah, you know, Dave, and when it, when it was a close game in the first half, he hit his first six shots. He was able to grab a bunch of rebounds. He really presented a lot of problems for the Dolphins. He has 21 points and nine rebounds in this game. He played very well in the game um, yesterday as well. His team is going to win the Tournament of Heroes Championship, and I don't know how anybody could argue with that choice as the tournament MVP. Yeah, well, we don't make the call, so we'll see if they agree with us on the opposite side. I think they will. And, um, you know, Mike, the other thing that we said coming into the tournament was that this tournament was a get-right tournament for one of these four teams. You know, one of these four teams, all four teams have been kind of struggling in the early parts of their season. Which one of these teams is going to come out with two wins and hang their hat on something strong for the rest of the way? And I think Wheaton has answered that question. Yeah, they have, Dave. But you also got to give the Dolphins a lot of credit for getting that big win in the game yesterday. And, uh, you know, that was a tough game against a tough opponent. So the Dolphins will come away with a split here in this Tournament of Heroes Championship as the Lions will win this 18th annual Tournament of Champions by a final score of 82-62 to 62 in a good game here this afternoon, Dave. And it's really been a very exciting 2019 Tournament of Heroes Championship. Yeah, Mike, you know, we were treated to some really good basketball. Unfortunately, this game was, you know, you know, kind of got away from us a little bit, as did the first game, too. 
um, you know, kind of got, um, you know, out of hand towards, towards the later stages. But overall, four teams that you could tell really wanted it, really wanted to hang their hat on something good to end the 2019 season. I think Wheaton answered that call. The Dolphins, for all their struggles uh, today, they battled hard. They never quit. They never stopped. They got a lot of youth in the game. And, you know, hopefully, again, like we said before, if they don't learn from this, from this, from a game like this, if they don't take things away from it, if they don't take lessons away from it, then it's a loss. If not, then, you know, they can, they can look to this and say, hey, remember that game against Wheaton? That's what galvanized us. That's what made us better later on. So, um, you know, let's hope that's the case for our Dolphins. And on the flip side of, of all of it, um, nice effort by Wheaton here to, um, you know, to, to finish that island off and go back home to Massachusetts, uh, a very happy basketball team. Yeah, you know, as the uh, table gets brought Same. out to the center of the floor, Dave, and we get ready uh, for the uh, closing ceremonies and the championship ceremonies here at the tank of the College of Staten Island, you know, it, it does give us a little bit of additional time to talk about, you know, what to expect uh, from the men's team in the second half of the season. And, you know, Dave, we haven't even uh, spoken once this weekend about the women's basketball team who's coming off of a big win, and they'll get back in action next week as well. Yeah, against John Jay as well. And, you know, I think, um, I think both teams and haven't spoken too much to the coaches about the actual schedule itself, but I know – in talking with the team and being around the team, they know that this is their last go-around in the CUNY Conference. Maybe they'll see a CUNY team here and there. You know, who knows, CUNY ECC Challenge or something like that. But, you know, for the most part, this is their last go-around. And, you know, not only do you, um, do you have relationships there, but there's, there's, you know, there's mutual respect with a lot of the other coaches, a lot of the other players. And, you know, the Dolphins don't want to exit the CUNY on a bad note. They want to be able to... Uh, put their best foot forward, and they want to leave the CUNY with the CUNY knowing and understanding we just lost one of, if not our best program with uh, in Staten Island. So, you know, that's what it's all about, and, um, you know, that's what we're going to be looking for. But beginning next Saturday, Mike, you know, it's a reset. You, you push the reset button, and you get ready for the CUNY, for the CUNY um, you know, stretch run for both the men and the women's team. And, you know, we are not going to expect anything less than excellence from our Dolphins team, the same way the Dolphins coaches and players do. Yeah, you know, the Dolphins record will drop to 4-7 and seven, uh, this afternoon. But, you know, like you mentioned, they 14 games remaining. Still plenty of chance for a lot of these players to uh, show what they could do uh, in the second half of the season as the Dolphins continue to build and get ready to enter the, you know, as a full-fledged member in the D2 Conference next year. Yeah. Yep, for sure, and it's all it's all a building process. It's all little steps, and um, you're not you're never going to get there. The same way you can't hit a ten point shot in a basketball game, you, you can't turn a program around in one off season, especially when you move up an entire division, division three to division two. So it's going to take it's, it's a process. It's going to take some years. It's going to take some you know mistakes. Um, our coaches are are recruiting for the first time at the division two level. Uh, we're offering scholarships for the very first time. So, um, you know, it's not always going to, you know, not every card you're going to turn up is going to be an ace of spades, Mike. You know, you're going to have to take some bad hands too. And, but it's all a process to get better. And you could see, uh, see the fans in the background, the contingent here from Wheaton enjoying it. And they're getting set for the uh, post-game ceremony as well, as are we. Yeah, and, you know, Dave, uh, you know, we've gone on the road and seen the Dolphins win tournaments, and it's a lot of fun. And, it's you know, it's certainly something that the Wheaton fans deserve to enjoy. The, you know, the parents and friends come down. They make the long trip. You make a road trip out of it. You come down uh, into New York. And, you know, let's be honest, Dave, the team played well. The team played better. They won the uh, championship, and they most certainly earned it. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we are getting set to listen to our uh, all-tournament team, Mike, so in case the people can hear it in the background, um, we will make sure you get to know who they are as well. And I know what James Martikos is saying now in the PA is thanking the College of Staten Island for this great tournament, which is, of course, uh, goes to honor our heroes from 9-11. Yeah, and, you know, that's always the biggest thing, of course, Dave, is that, you know, throughout all the uh, the 18 tournaments, the whole purpose is uh, to honor the uh, to honor the uh, three uh, former CSI Dolphin players. And, again, 
you know, you want to come out with the victory every year, but the Dolphins made it into the championship game. They played well, kept the game close in the first half, close to within 10 in the second half, but that was really as close as they could make it. Yep, and we saw the CSI captains accept the runner-up trophy, and now the Wheaton College players and coaches will go up to accept their uh, championship trophy. They've chosen their senior captains to do so. Alex Debro and Robbie Lowy will be the ones to accept it. As was mentioned, uh, it's their first tournament champion, tournament tournament of heroes championship, and their very first appearance. So yeah. now the all-tournament team, Mike. Yeah, and you know, they ended up out rebounding the Dolphins by 23 in this game, Dave. Yeah, Jared Thorpe Johnson gets an all-tournament team honor from Curry College. Davrian Greer from Bridgewater. He played very well, Dave, in this tournament. Adiola Tunji, 38 points. A Tournament of Heroes record last night. He gets an all-tournament team honor. I know he didn't have the kind of day he wanted today. Probably a season low for him, Mike. Six points and four rebounds. Yeah, just played 23 minutes, Dave, and just never could get on track here this afternoon. Just one of those kind of games is Aaron Williams, the fourth member of this all-tournament team. Yep, Williams, and I think that leaves one more. I think we know who it's going to be, but... Yeah, they'll be... Uh, Williams. It, yeah, and, uh, you know, it looks like the, they'll save the tournament MVP. Yeah, well-deserved by Robbie Dave. Yeah, I think so, too. And he's, yeah, he's not one to crack a smile, Mike. <laughs> it's all business, this kid. Yeah, you uh, know, you, you got to really like the way he played, yeah, though. He and like you said, Dave, when the game was a real tight game in the first half, he was the best player on the floor. Yeah, he was, he was, and... Uh, we saw a good smile from him as he left the, the area, so um, great job. And now they're going to invite the entire Wheaton team to come out and take a team photo, and that's always a good feeling. They deserved it. They played a great uh, couple of games here. They got to rip through a very persistent Bridgewater side, and then, um, and then of course, they were able to uh, get through Staten Island with relative ease, especially late in the second half. So... See it on your on your screen now. Uh, we will not ret return here on CSI Sportsnet until well into uh, January. Be sure to, of course, consult the website www.csidolphins.com backslash CSI Sportsnet for the um, latest in our schedule. And, of course, we will have home basketball all season long. So for everybody involved, with the 18th Annual Tournament of Heroes. For our statisticians on the other side of the gym floor, Joseph Foreman and Sam Flecker. For our camera operators during the weekend, Anita Lorenzo, Joe Cusimano. Uh, for our engineer all weekend long, Nick Durst. Uh, this is David Pizzuto for Mike Babuski, wishing you all a great rest of the weekend, and thanks for tuning in.